So I've been working on a series of paintings on Cuban immigrants. And tonight, I want to share with you the story of my two immigrant grandmothers and the, um, their struggle and their journey bringing their family to the US. One grandmother was a caretaker who looked after her siblings, and the other was a spy. So in July of 2021, when all the SOS Cuba protests started going on, I decided to do a, a deeper dive into the story and struggles of Cuban immigrants. So I wanted to see how those stories and struggles would transform families generationally. So I started with my own family. I collected old family photos from the 50s and the 60s and um, started hearing stories from other members of my family and what I came to find out was my two grandmothers were, have endured insanely difficult journeys. Um, they've been separated from their loved ones, they've been persecuted, they've escaped, they've been reunited and ultimately they made it to the US and survived and because of their journey I'm here and able to share these stories today. So my first grandmother is Maria Antonia Baluja. She grew up outside of Santa Clara in the mountains, near the mountains, and in a campo, and her family was very poor growing up. Uh, a lot of the times they just struggled to even have food. So she was the oldest of her five siblings, and when she was a teenager, she was the only one in her family that could work. Her mother wasn't able to. So she worked as a cleaning lady and after work would come home and help raise her, her siblings. Um, this was you know, her childhood. Now, this is Joaquin. Joaquin is her youngest brother. And when he was young, he got a severe fever. And because they lived so far out in the sticks, they weren't able to get him to a hospital, and this left him with a permanent, severe brain injury. Left him with a um, speech impediment and a learning disability. So back then, he was getting ridiculed in school and bullied, and so his mom decided to pull him out of school. Well-intentioned, but it left him with kind of the mind of the child and no education. So it was then that my grandmother decided she would look after Joaquin for the rest of their lives. So this is a painting that I made of my great-grandmother and Joaquin on their way over from Cuba on a boat to Miami. Now, my grandmother, when, when she left Cuba, when Castro was kind of coming into power, her and my grandfather left, they went to New York and later to Miami, and then they just worked hard so that they can eventually bring over Joaquin and her mom and the rest of her siblings. So, you know, this was Maria Antonia's life. She sacrificed everything she had to so that she can provide a life for my mom, my, you know, her, her two daughters. She raised them, she took care of Joaquin, and she raised me and my, my siblings. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm blessed to have known these stories so my other grandmother, very different. This is Angela Castum Padilla. Now, she is actually a Syrian immigrant. Her family went to Cuba when she was young, and she grew up in Cuba. So as she was getting older, she got involved in, got interested in the politics of the time, and joined an anti-Castro movement. So this movement eventually became, got recruited by the CIA. And the reason for that was to gain intel on Castro and to ultimately plan for the Bay of Pigs. So Angela was given um, aliases, they held clandestine meetings, they even transported weapons for other anti-Castro organizations. And eventually two of those members were captured, interrogated, and ultimately executed. So it was at that point my grandmother, Angela, decided it was time to get the family out of Cuba. So she took my biological father and sent him off on his own when he was young through the Peter Pan Project, with which they sent a bunch of children by themselves without their families to the US through the Catholic Church. They would be separated for years. 
Years later, they were reunited when my grandmother and you know her husband came to the U.S. Then later, during the Mario boat lift, Angela jumped back on, jumped onto a shrimp boat, and went back to Cuba to pick up the remaining 11 family members that were still stuck there. And she brought them back. So this is a painting that I'm working on currently of Angela. And this is of her time while she was working with that organization. Her cover at the time was that a secretary or something like that. So, you know, the more I start in, um, I want to take this time basically to just remind everyone of the strength and the power that, that family has, um, whether it's your given family or your chosen family, um, and the power that hope, courage, and resilience have in, you know, when you face difficult situations in life, even if they seem like they just keep on coming. Um, my two grandmothers lived very different lives, and ultimately they, they they dedicated it to being able to provide for their families in very different ways. Um, so this painting is my grandfather, Cesar Armando Baluga, who actually recently passed away. And this painting is what started it all for me, this whole journey of Cuban immigrants. During SOS Cuba, I called up my grandfather, I brought him to my studio, took his picture, we shared a beer, and talked for a few hours. And so, that's resilience, that's, you know, I wanna thank my grandparents for everything that they've done for my whole family, and I wanna thank you all for being here and listening to us, so thank you.